I was raised in a conservative Jewish uh, you know, household. It you know wasn't an especially spiritual upbringing, but still, it uh, you know the resilience uh, and the creativity of the Jewish people and their tradition. My you know father, engineer, worked for a big aerospace company in uh, Southern California, and he uh, to study to study you know, to get as much education as we could. He was a real, uh, you know, fan of, you know, science fiction. And, uh, you know, so I think in, you know, some ways I'm, you know, carrying on the kind of interests and uh, he would have, you know, liked to have done himself or was, you know, hoping for me to do. You know, some of the work I've done is, you know, kind of sci-fi. You give people, uh, you know, substance in their vein and they're transported to other worlds and, you know, contact intelligent beings who communicate with them. Uh, you know, but at Pomona, um, I took a, you know, class in embryology, you know, the development of an organism from, you know, a, uh, you know, very small beginning. I became interested in, you know, cells. So I learned, you know, transcendental meditation um, when I was, uh, you know, junior. I like uh, I like, you know, being able and, you know, uh, you know, concentrate my mind and attain some kind of mildly altered state. Everybody was, you know, taking psychedelic drugs and, you know, there wasn't really any context for understanding, you know, what was going on. In, in you know, college, I'd be, you know, becoming interested in, you know, the biology of spiritual experience. And um, I even took a you know, class from you know, Carl Prebrim. And I wrote a paper you know, for his undergraduate class on you know, physiological psychology on the spiritual you know, properties of the pineal gland. You know, this was 1971, you know, 1972. I that I wanted to go to medical school, I mean, ultimately. You know, but the reason that I wanted, uh, you know, to go to medical school is I wanted to study psychedelic drugs. And, you know, this was 1972, 1973. And it was, you know, in the you know, setting of the passage of the Controlled Substances Act, I started a meditation group affiliated with a monastery that was, you know, supervising my training. And it was, you know, meditating a lot. You know, we had a, you know, group that, you know, met once a week. Um, and, you know, sometimes I would, meditation would, you know, lead the, you know, services, you know, the singing, the chanting, uh, Buddhist, you know, sutras. Um, I would, you know, host monks coming down from the abbey to, uh, you know, lead retreats. But, you know, basically they, you know, saved my life. Um, you know, I was depressed. I had dropped out of medical school. I didn't know, you know, what the heck. And, uh, you know, then one I'm coming back you know, back from the work, you know, session, and I'm no longer depressed, and I go back to medical school. And, you know, they encouraged me while I was in medical school to keep at it. It was a, you know, worthy thing to do. Kept my interests in, you know, psychedelics to myself uh, the next, you know, number of years um, until I was able to actually, you know, get in a position to perform the research. Uh, you know, programs at, at the time were quite, you know, psychoanalytic. Uh, they were, you know, kind of, you know, training you to become a therapist or a, or even more specifically, a, a, you know, Freudian psychoanalyst. Uh, you know, psychiatric medications were still, you know, kind of crude. The antidepressants were kind of hard to prescribe and hard to take. You know, lithium had, you know, just come out. You know, the anti, uh, well, you know, the antipsychotic you know, medications were extraordinarily toxic uh, you know so up until then you know the emphasis was on you know, psychotherapy and a little bit of prescribing if you're being you know funded by you know drug companies or if you if um, your training is being you know driven by by you know drug companies then uh you're swimming against the tide by uh even including more, you know, psychotherapeutic, psychoanalytic modalities. Um, and, you know, that's a challenge, you know, but I think it's a, you know, challenge which is in its own way played out 
within all of the specialties in you know medicine x-rays are cheaper than mris but if you can do mris you make more money um you know so it's becoming an increasingly you know rare program that actually continues to train you know the residents in your know, psychotherapy you know it's, it's interesting you know the majority of students who are entering you know psychoanalytic training are you know clinical psychologists or, you know they're you know phds rather than mds um wasn't the case at all you know 30 40 years ago the majority of people entering analytic you know training were mds and i i you know think it's a result of the emphasis on prescribing you know biological you know psychiatry well you know one of my you know supervisors in you know, sacramento was a you know training analyst you know you know super you know by the book you know freudian you know kind of guy and you know he used to you know joke about how you know psychiatry was losing its mind over the brain you know more to the you know point you know the nefarious aspect of you know psychiatry um, I thought you were going to, you know, bring up was the MK Ultra, you know, CIA operations, you know, you know, giving un, you know, suspecting citizens LSD and other drugs, you know, back in the '60s, and you know, oh man, you know, the early '70s, and and you know that was completely under the radar. I mean, you know, very few people knew that was going on. You know, a few years back, I you know got my hands on all those um, on all those MK Ultra files like thousands and thousands of pages but a 50 80 you know, percent of those you know files are redacted yes. you know so you know people were starting you know to write about melatonin uh as perhaps a you know mediator of winter depression hmm pineal gland that sounds familiar and you know melatonin all oh, right right in you know medical school i was quite keen on enter on on studying you know the endocrine system and even at stanford i you know took a uh, class on you know behavior and hormones uh which was i think the first you know you know behavioral endocrinology class ever taught in an undergraduate school you know people were starting to look at the human physiology of melatonin and you know there was you know, some data you know suggesting it was involved in puberty and you know reproductive capacity uh, you know so you know people had you know just discovered you could suppress your know, melatonin uh, if you gave them you know bright enough light uh, you know so I moved down to La Jolla after a year in you know Fairbanks um, do research you know, learned how to do, you know, clinical psychopharmacology research, uh, you know, find volunteers, you know, get them to, to uh, you know, consent to studies, you know, do the studies, collect data, analyze the data, you know, present the data, you know, to your peers. And, you know, then we, you know, really lucked out because we just kind of, you know, did, did some, you know, mathematical voodoo and, you know, figured out, well, if you want to give back melatonin in the bright light condition, you know, what kind of infusion rate, like, you know, uh, would, you know, be necessary, you know, you know, like how much melatonin over, you know, how long a period of time at what kind of rate would, you know, reproduce the normal curve secretion. Have, you know, proof, you know, that, you know, melatonin, Melatonin was, you know, mostly sedating. If you looked at it very carefully in a well-controlled study, it, it was sedating. It wasn't psychedelic. Well, well like as a rule, w within the you know, scientific community, you can ask any question that you want, as long as that you know question is you know based on you know pre-existing data, and your you know hypothesis sound more or less. You know, within you know the religious community, well, well, there's. Uh, well, there's teachings, um, and uh, you just don't really you know, challenge you know the teachings as as you know much as you you know kind of adapt yourself to the teachings, <clears throat> or you keep you know quiet with respect to any have with the teachings. Um, you know, so one of my studies, my you know DMT studies, and questioning them about. Uh, what might you know? 
between Buddhist practice and the spiritual properties of the you know, psychedelic drugs, you know, those were, um, you know, those were questions that just couldn't be asked. It could be in your know, private you know, spiritual interviews with monks that I had known for 20 or 25 years, you know, but they really couldn't be discussed in a you know, public forum or, you know, in other written you know, literature at all. You know, I think one of, you know, the reasons that we were able to get such incredible stories from the volunteers in my study was because of my, you know, psychiatric training. Learn, you know, what it was like to be completely regressed in the hands of a therapist, in the hands of, you know, somebody sitting there. You know, so I was really able to identify peers who were completely regressed and completely dependent on my good wishes and my interest in them. And I don't think I would have been quite as able to relate to that totally incapacitated, you know, DMT state uh, without, you know, having experience within the psychoanalytic setting. Um, I like EDM. Um, I like Spangle. I was into some, you know, mindless, you know, violence. It's, uh, it's, um, intellectual underpinnings were you know, quite appealing. This really isn't working. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you.